So this is a huge step forward for us. Um, rather than me just talking about it, I actually want to introduce Nigel Thompson, who is our head of product management and incidentally design. So one of the big moves we made this past year was we uh, actually took our design team and our product management team and we merged them. Because as an organization, I believed that we had spent a tremendous amount in investing in security, but it was time to make usability and user experience a first class citizen. And so, Nigel, why don't you come up and show us the new good applications? Thanks, Christy. <laughs> so I'm very excited to be here. Um, you know, at Good, we've been working on the next generation collaboration suite for a while. And uh, rather than, and, and I think everybody's familiar with Good Dynamics. It's a, it's a new platform. Well, it's been, a, been around for a while. We've been building on the platform. It's really robust. We've got a lot of security built into it. And we're going to take the traditional Good for Enterprise and we're going to move it to Good Dynamics. But rather than just kind of just take what we had today and just put it on Good Dynamics, we, we wanted to take a pause and really have a look at our users and talk to our users and figure out, you know, what's important to them and to IT as well. And the, the two big things that came up was from IT. It was IT is like, well, you know, we've, we've got to make it really easy to mobilize, mobilize our workers. We've got all these new employees come in. We've got uh, existing employees with devices. How, do, how can I make it really easy to get them mobilized? And then from the end user's perspective, he's like, well, I just want to be productive. Can you help me be productive? And these are beautiful devices. You know, the iPhone's a beautiful device. The Samsung's a beautiful device. You know, the, 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 the devices that our users are wanting to bring to work and they want to be productive. But one of the challenges is um, if you look at the way apps are built today, you know, apps, apps are designed to do some things really, really well. Like last Memorial weekend, I was going to take the kids to the movies, and, uh, you know, there's an app for it, right? An app tells me what's playing, uh, you know, the closest theater works really well. But as a business user, uh, my needs are a little bit more complex. You know, I get information from somebody, maybe it's an email, they've sent me an attachment, I want to view it, maybe I want to make some notes or annotate it, I want to then save it, and maybe send it somewhere else. So there's a lot, so my workflows are more complicated. I end up touching all these different applications. So what could we do at Good to try to smooth it out? And when we built, when we started to think about conceptualizing building the next generation, we also thought, well, hold on a second, let's not just build it for ourselves, let's build it for everyone, right? So if you're building your own apps and you want to have some of the services that maybe Good's already providing, you use our security today, what about some other services? I see that you bring in presence. I see that you bring in emails. I see you have hooks into Active Directory. Can we leverage that to save our developers from having to build that? So we wanted to build a way to make it really easy. The other thing that we, we uh, recognize when we talk to our users, and by the way, we, we did talk to users. We actually literally sat in the back seat. We had uh, some of our guys here uh, driving around in the back seat of a um, you know, major insurance firm. Because insurance people by nature are mobile. They're always moving around. And they're like watching them like juggle uh, laptops while they're driving, devices, Blackberries, all sorts of things. And the end goal was they were just trying to be productive. And they were, they were trying to be creative. And they had to be creative to, be, to do a lot of the business type workflows. So when we looked at it, we figured out what was hard, what was easy, and were there things that we could do to help smooth it out. So that was some of the thought processes. But I'm going to get back to the original themes, which is I'm a brand new employee. I, I, I come to the, uh, you know, I've just left HR. I go to IT. I want to be productive. The, my very first ex, uh, experience with a good product is that activation process. So there's a, quite a lot of friction in that. We recognize that. We know it can be a little bit painful. So we wanted to solve that one. So what we did and we're going to play a video just to kind of give you an example, is we wanted to uh, look at how good works today. And this is the one that's available today. And that's, that's on your left-hand side. Sorry, I'm a little dyslexic. And then we've got the new good on the right. So um, we're, going to, we're going to play the video. And this is the activation. I've just downloaded it from the App Store. It's on my device. I click the button. What happens now, right? So this is normally the provisioning one. And with the new one, we introduced easy activation. So there was actually no pin. It just activated against the delegate. We stopped the clock on GFE just to let it catch up a little bit. And you can see the new good is actually using good dynamics as the backbone. We're actually also using a new lightweight server architecture. So I just put in my email credentials. And then it's going to start the sync process. And we're taking advantage of native protocols that have been wrapped with good dynamics. And within a minute, and this literally was one second short of a minute, 
I've actually got all my emails and I can be productive. Meanwhile, um, good for enterprise is still doing what good for enterprise does, right? So, so we're, we're seeing almost a 2x improvement. And this is a really a big deal. I mean, you've got 5,000 employees. You, know, you just saved you know, 5,000 minutes or 10,000 minutes. So, so that was one of the first things that we looked at. And we looked at a lot of different things. So Nigel, and, wait. Now, one of the things oh. that I'm uh, particularly bad at is uh, I'm constantly switching devices back and forth. And so there are devices, certain de tablets, for example, I might only take with me on a business trip. So that's really great for the first time I activate a device. What about a device I've left laying around for a couple of weeks? Right, right. So that's kind of often that vacation, vacation scenario. I know Christy doesn't take vacations, but if you did take a vacation, you come back and you pick up your iPad, um, that, that was a bit of a bit of a problem for end users. They would click on it, and because of the queuing system, it's much like BlackBerry, that they'll start rolling in um, with the oldest to the newest. So we knew that was a problem. We, we heard you loud and clear. We heard you guys <laughs> loud and clear. So the way the new architecture works is you actually get the newest first. So as soon as you've come back from vacation, you got a nice tan, you click on the button, and immediately you, you're, um, you're busy, right? No, no time to get a cup of coffee, time to get to work. Okay. Excellent. So we fix that. So rather than just um, talking about it, we'll have a quick look. So we're going to switch to my device, hopefully. And uh, I'm going to go to the new good. You can see it, see it in, the, in the corner. Um, I, I need to authenticate, but I'm not very good with numbers and letters. So we're going to use a Just remember that, like they say, trade shows and uh, car <laughs> races, right? People come yeah. for the crashes. So I'm just. <laughs> Brace yourself. <Yeah. laughs> what are you talking about? It's fine. It works perfectly. <laughs> you know, we are, we're running a lot of beta apps for this, uh, for this demonstration. So um, what I just did was that, that was actually a biometric authentication. Uh, we didn't build it. Our partner, um, iVerify, uh, built the authenticator. And uh, what this represents is that in the platform, and we were quite quiet about it when we, when we built it, engineering and architecture built it out, is that we have, the, we have an ability that you can plug in different authenticators. Um, so, so you might have, your business requirement might be two-factor. You know, we've got partners that are actually building uh, like low-powered Bluetooth uh, tokens um, that have proximity as well, so if you move away from the device, the device will lock. Um, so you can start to get really good entropy. Um, you know, the biometrics are almost equivalent to like a 50 a digit alphanumeric, which I could never type in. Um, it would take all day. So, so it's really nice. So these are some of the alternatives. We're experimenting with all sorts of things. But anyway, we're in the, we're in the new good. So you notice there's a few things that are, that are new. Um, we're trying to make a lot more vertical space so people can see all the emails they care about. We're building accessibility in from day one. You know, we've heard from our users that accessibility is, is, is not an option. Accessibility has to be built in, so it's part of day one. So if I'm using my native OS and I change the font size, it all just expands. Um, the, the obvious difference is we're pulling uh, photos. You know, for, for a lot of people, um, you know, the data they work with is people-centric. So we're actually starting to, as we architect this new version of the app, is people are at the center of the app. So it doesn't matter where I am in the app, I can find information about people and the data that's important. And then you'll also notice that there's uh, little green dots next to them, so that's presence. So what we did is, um, I talked earlier that um, you know, we, uh, we don't want to just build it for ourselves, we want to build it for others. So what we did is we actually built presence as a service. If you think about an application service, an application server, we're running a whole bunch of services. This is just one of many services running. And you as an IT can determine, oh, what services do I want to publish and allow the apps to subscribe to? You may have heard uh, yes, yesterday um, at Apple's developer conference, they were talking about services, you know, app to app services. You know, we already provide that. We want to take it to the next level. We're looking at application servers providing services and giving you a way to publish and subscribe. So it's a really big deal, and I'm going to show some other examples. But let's uh, pop into to the app. You can see, um, um, you know, it's a modern application. I can slide around. I can, you know, slide and delete, do all the things that, you, that a native experience. And by the way, if I was on uh, my, my Samsung Galaxy, um, which I just don't have set up to display, you'd be having the same experience, but it'd be an Android experience versus an Apple experience. So as we build our apps, we want to we want to be representative of the user community. So um, you may have noticed that there's also a little red dot that I can move around uh, on the device. This is um, this is actually a launch pad. So one of the things that we um, heard from the users were. When it comes to business applications and business productivity, it's really confusing sometimes, especially as a new employee. 
Um, you know, the business has given you a bunch of apps and they're proprietary, you don't even really know what they are. Um, so let's aggregate the apps for business in a single view. And even though I'm in um, good for enterprise, uh, this, could be an, this is going to be an any good application. So it doesn't matter where you are, this is the glue that allows you to flow through your productivity. So in this case, we'll, we'll have a quick look at calendar. And uh, you know, calendars have a little, bit of a, a little bit of a refresh. Some of the things I like about the calendar when you go into the details, you know, we see the people, we see the number of people. I can scroll down, I can see their status. I see Peter here. Um, he's available, he's available, he's right there if you want to talk to him. <laughs> chat to him. Um, so what else do we have? Well, you, you might have noticed that there's actually a, a Salesforce One application. So Salesforce is, is a fun one for us. Um, we, we did something a little bit different. We're going to talk some more about it, but we, we partnered with Salesforce, and uh, we wanted to, to provide a trusted, a trusted Salesforce One application. So we're just going to have a quick look at it. So I'm in my Salesforce application, and it's a native experience. I can see all my feeds, and this has been compiled by Good dynamics. So it looks and feels like a native application. I can go in, I can go to my dashboards, I can see my sales, I'm not a sales guy, um, but um, I love dashboards, these, these are cool, I have no idea what they represent. Uh, activity pipeline <laughs> looks good, good job guys. I can tell you what they represent. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but where it's a little bit different is, um, you know, it, when I go to contacts and um, I see Steve here, and I wanna send Steve an email, um, if this was just Salesforce on my device from, from the App Store, when I email him, it ends up coming from my iCloud account, right? So that's a bit of a problem, and uh, you know, a lot of times it's like really important data, like NDAs and how much, how much the deal size is and things like that. So we wanted to, when I click on, on the email, that we give you a secure compose, and then all the data has been routed um, through your environment, so it's managed and regulated. Um, the other thing that we also uh, provide for is inter inter internet browsing. So if you've got a, a website in Salesforce, you click on it, it'll use our secure browser. I did notice for some reason um, in my, uh, there was a notification that came in from Christy. Why would that happen? Um, a board presentation. Okay, apparently Christy would like me to uh, look at a document. Just imagine uh, I'm not standing four feet away from you, I, that I couldn't. <laughs> Christy, our CEO, um, ha, there's an upcoming meeting and she wants me to look at some files that are actually on our, on our, on our hub. So I'm gonna go there and um, I'm actually gonna do a presentation. We're just gonna talk, she wants to know about uh, which, one, which one of the activations we should use. So um, I need to respond back to her, she's not right there. Um, so how do I do that? I'm looking at a web page. You know, this feels like there's a million ways to do it, or maybe there's like zero ways to do it. It gets kind of confusing. So I click on the share, and I see that there's actually a save a web clip. And um, what's cool about this is it wasn't there last week. What's cool about it is that there's a, there's a partner who has their own application. I'll show you in a moment. They were like, oh, wow, we've, we've got a great idea. We want to do a service that does, grabs web clips, and you can do things to it and they just built it, and they published it through the Good Developer Network, and it magically appears in my application. And so this is, this is beginning the power of the services framework. So I'm gonna click on the web click, and it's our partner Notate. If you're not familiar with uh, Notate, uh, Notate has a, a, it's like a, a note application, and it actually syncs with Outlook, so you can get all your um, exchange uh, notes. In this particular case, I'm gonna have a look, and there's the document, and then I can do things to it, right? I can go in, and. You know what, Christy, this is the one you should use. How do I get it to Christy? Well, we have a share drive, so let me go to the share again, the share icon, and I'm gonna save this to good share. So what it's doing is automatically in the background, it's, it's saving it to good share. I'll go back to uh, my email, and I'm gonna respond to Christy, and I'm gonna let her know um, it's on the P drive. So that's it. All right. Well, let's assume that uh, I'm not four feet or five feet away from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, Nigel responded to my message. <laughs> so again, I've got G3 on this application. He tells me that it's on the P drive. 
So just to be clear, you know, this is not our version of Box or Dropbox. He literally is sending it to SharePoint, which is sitting our actual corporate SharePoint. I'm going to use our little launcher. What I love about this little launcher is that it, it actually brings together the entire ecosystem. If IT has given me 20 applications, I have a centralized place where I can navigate through the, the business apps without kind of paging through pages and pages of consumer apps. Yeah, can I say one thing, Christy? You, you, might. you might notice that it's not just icons, there's actually other things that, that are coming. We have a lot of plans for this, specifically around the iPad. We think, this is, we think the tablets, not just this, but Android tablets and these types of tablets are great business productivity tools. A lot of users are now using them for work. They're attaching Bluetooth keyboards. So let's start to give them some more productivity, laptopish um, like functionality. So you can see a lot more coming. You can see the other, uh, connected to that, you know, down the side, you can see other items that are coming, pin drafts, global search, which is my hot button. How do I look across things uh, from across the enterprise, things that I may be looking for? You know that within the good today, my search is limited to what I've downloaded. What if what I downloaded didn't have or what I'm looking for didn't happen in the last 30 days? How do I go back and look behind the firewall? So in this case, he told me it was in SharePoint, so I'm going to go to my documents. Uh, he said it was on the P drive, so I'm going to P drive. Here's this web link that he sent me, and here's the document that he saved back for me. Looks good. This looks like the activation state I want to share the board because it's up and to the right, so that's all good. <laughs> um, I'm going to jump out, and I'm actually going to go into the board pad application. This is another one of the ecosystem uh, partners that is announcing today. So clearly, I'm a big fan of the BoardPad applications. But this is, a, this is a, a common request across my customers as well. And this is one of those use cases where my board members are not employees. I can't tell them what kind of device to have. They're going to bring whatever they're going to bring. So this is uh, BoardPad. Let's click on my next board meeting. I can assure you now you're not seeing live data. I mean, you're seeing live data, but you're not seeing real data. Um, you know, Nigel, I want Nigel to actually come in and present uh, uh, the activations data so I can see the board meeting starts at 2 o'clock. This is very cool. So you can see these are the people who are participating. You can see Nigel's on the list, and you can see that he's green. So BoardPad is actually already taking advantage of the presence service that's being exposed by Good Dynamics. This isn't presence in Good. This doesn't mean that Nigel's sitting on good. This is the corporate presence service that's connect connected with Exchange back in the office. So for the first time, I have access to enterprise presence information across the ecosystem of applications. So I can tell Nigel. I can chat with him from here because I know he's online. I can say, looks good. Be there at 2. Let's hope I can type without my glasses. Another great reason for resizable fonts. And there we go. All right. So that's just a, a sampling of what's coming with the platform with the new applications. Yeah, so, so we showed you a few things. Um, we showed you the new good. And obviously, it's got, a, it's got a new look and feel. But more importantly, it's a services-based architecture. That would be the, thing, the one thing if I was asked you to, to take away about what we're really focusing on it's unlocking services to, to help your employees be productive. And we've introduced new concepts like uh, the launch pad. You'll see new things like textual menus. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we're working on. And we love your feedback. So please keep, we do listen. Please So Nigel, when, when will everybody yeah. get to see it? So it's coming this month. So uh, this month, we're actually going to have beta so that you can start playing with it. So it's. Uh, you can talk to your uh, good representative, and we can actually get you set up in the beta program so you can start to get familiar with good dynamics. You can get familiar with our new uh, lightweight uh, application server architecture. You can even start playing with uh, building your own apps with presence, doing your own business mashups. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So that is the next generation good. So as we said, you know, big focus on usability. We've only shown you a tiny, small sliver, you know, 15 minutes worth of, of what's coming in the new applications. You'll see some of the new capabilities filling out as we go through the, the, uh, the uh, beta. We're very excited to get it into the hands of customers. Big focus on usability, big focus on performance, and based on good dynamics.